It's good.
Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, get a picture of this thing and walk out there. Front and center, come on, she wants front and center shots. Brian, go right out in front. Uh, take a little while, so if you think you're going to want to sit there, uh, you should grab a seat, grab a chair. I see a couple of you already got chairs. If anybody else wants to grab one, you can do that. Otherwise, we'll just stand throughout the whole thing. We're waiting for our charcoal. It's coming. We hope. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about... Um, the ceremony that feels right for us today. Uh, we are getting, Heather and I are getting married um, using uh, the Quaker license, which is um, available in Pennsylvania only, as far as we know it. And the Quaker license is where um, two people in the community uh, pronounce them man and wife. Uh, they don't rely on uh, one other person they rely, and, and is an exchange of vows, vows that mean um, something to them, uh, and, and, and it's a promise. Um, so uh, with everybody else being a part of this circle, um, why are we here? Uh, we're here because this is a church that we feel, it's a spiritual fellowship that we feel connected to. Um, it's an interfaith community. Uh, they have a service here every Sunday. And every Sunday is different. There's not a pastor. Uh, there's different people that bring different ceremonies, rituals, presentations. Um, and we've been here a bunch of times for it. This is also where I'm going to uh, ministry school. Um, about six months into a two and a half year program uh, to become an interfaith minister. Um, I'm doing that because when Emily was in West Virginia, she took a religion to the world course and I found it fascinating. So um, this course of study is that we study um, in, intensely, intimately, uh, the, the, all the different religions in the world. And we've covered a bunch of them so far. And so this ceremony for us is a little bit of what we've liked from each of those and what feels right for us. Um, and this is truly Heather and I standing before God and God as he is represented in each one of our family and friends and people that are here with us today. Um, so this is where I go to ministry school every other Saturday, like nine to six a year, a whole lot of writing. Uh, my first day of school was when I turned 50, and, uh, and I hadn't been to school for a long time. So uh, it's been eye-opening um, and a challenge and a lot of fun and something that I have felt passionate about every uh, after every, every presentation. Um, I, I call Heather and I have about an hour and a half ride home, and I can't shut up the whole hour and a half because I'm so excited about like what you know. Oh my God! Like you know, like you know, check out what the Muslims are doing. Check out what the you know these pagans are doing. Check out what Native Americans are doing and what the Quakers are doing. Um, we found out about the availability of this license when a uh, a woman from the Quaker uh, ministry came and shared her experience uh, with us. Um, and it made sense to us. Uh, so that's why, uh, actually if you go down center city Philadelphia, down to city hall, there's two windows. There's a marriage license window and then there's a Quaker marriage license window. Uh, we went to Doylestown and uh, if you come up after the, the ceremony and you read our the marriage certificate says that we. <laughs> yeah, we hereby certify on the 23rd day of August 2014, we united ourselves in marriage at Pebble Hill in the County of Bucks, Pennsylvania. And um, in the bottom, there is a place for the witnesses to sign, and in in. The Quaker um, tradition, uh, they make a big marriage license, 
and everybody in attendance signs it. One of the last classes that I had in uh, ministry school before we broke for the summer was a guy who was uh, Celtic. Um, he was involved in Celtic spirituality, and part of what they believe is, uh, is that a vow is a solemn thing. And, and a vow is never something that happens between two people. There always has to be witnesses. And in the old uh, Irish and the old Celtic traditions, to stand witness to somebody's vow means that you will also suffer the consequences if that vow doesn't go through. <laughs> Just think about that. I'm just saying, if you wanted to run, all right, now will be a good time. Just like kind of saunter off to the side. But, um, okay. Yeah. How's that charcoal coming? Good. No, but how's the charcoal coming for this? Yeah, we don't know about it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go a little bit out of Hey, can we get everybody as to form? As I can possibly do it, it's going. We get this show on the road. Okay, so this is Heather's dad. <laughs> and uh, Heather's parents have asked um, that I build their house for them, their retirement house. For them. <laughs> and we just got approval from the homeowner association, and that project is going for so our way of getting back at them, we have made Mr. Bourne solely responsible for the ribs for today. Mr. Bourne! I can't vouch for anything that's uh, how they're going to be now. <laughs> uh -oh. So if you like the ribs, come and tell me. If you don't like the ribs, go and tell them. All right. Uh, can, we, uh, can we get everybody to form a big circle? Okay? Uh, we're around us. We're, we're, and it doesn't have to be exact circle, but just so we're all together. Yeah. <laughs> we hold hands, Joe. You can hold hands, rope them up, whatever you want to do, right? But yeah, touching each other would be okay. If you're, if you're more comfortable putting you your hand around somebody or their shoulder, then we have a field of right there. Okay, so our ceremony is going to start like this. Um, we're going to uh, pass around this stick. And this is our talking stick, and this came about to us um, a few years ago. There was a power outage in uh, the ghetto where Heather was living, and, um, and so we started having meetings in our backyard. And they weren't AA meetings or, or NA meetings. Uh, so we call them talking stick circles. And I got this from uh, the Peace Weavers out in, in Thunder Mountain. And um, I didn't get this stick from them. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Uh, but we had, we, had a, we had a circle and we had a bonfire. And what we did is we had a stick. And the stick that we were using then was a stick that Lou and I had harvested from uh, the sycamore tree that used to grow out back of Liberté it was the oldest tree in Bucks County and it got struck by lightning and it got knocked down and we kind of talked about it and thought that we really didn't want the tree to just go back into the earth um, after it had sat over top of the uh, gazebo um, that the, the bike run had, had put on the property uh, and a lot of, lot, of, lot of women had done a lot of step work in that and poured their hearts out and this tree had heard a lot. You guys can look at the picture, okay? Oh. And um, so that's how it started. And then uh, a friend of ours came to the talking stick, and, and, it, and it wound up being a big hit. We wound up having talking stick circles for uh, quite a while. 
Um, and we'd have a big bonfire when we were in Yardley and then later on when we were in Trevos and people would come and the story of the talking stick in Native American culture is this. Um, when you have the stick, you speak your truth, only your truth. Um, when you do not have the talking stick, um, you say nothing and you listen respectfully and you try to be with that person. So we've coupled this, uh, okay, so this stick comes from uh, my good friend Rick who was a, a painter and an artist and he made this stick for us and there's a buffalo nickel in the top and there's untold counts of varnish on here and um, literally hundreds and hundreds of people have held this and spoken their truth, whatever it was, um, at the circles. Um, and a lot of you have been there and it has been pretty remarkable experiences. So this is part of our ministry. And this is part of our gift. This is part of our service that we bring to people. Um, is the opportunity to be heard. The opportunity to be connected. And so the first thing that we're going to do um, today is part of this sermon is we're going to pass this around. And uh, all I would like for you to do is when this comes to you is say, my name is Joe and I am awesome. And then everybody else in this circle is going to connect with you by mirroring exactly what you just said back to you, okay? So I'm gonna ask you to please keep it short. We got a lot of people, a couple, couple, a couple of words, that's it. Okay, just say your name and one or two words. Matt, just one or two words, that's it. Because everyone's gotta be able to say it right back to you, okay? And then when it comes back, we'll do our next thing. So. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. I'm holding the stick. Uh, my name is Joe, up, up. and I am excited. And so everybody else is now going to say, well, soon as I get on, my name is Joe, and I am excited, because we are all connected to each other. Okay, so that's what, this, that's what this is about. There is a part of me that is excited to be here. There's also a part of me that's very nervous about how things are going to go here. If this is strange for you, if this is the first kind of thing like this that you've been at, then that connectedness, let's just give it a name. And, and when I say, we'll just say, my name is Joe and I'm excited to be here, okay? Uh, but if it doesn't make sense, look, there's a lot of people by halfway through, you'll catch on. So we'll try it again. As soon as I get done saying my thing, you're just gonna repeat it right back to me. Uh, my name is Joe and I'm excited to be here. My name is Joe and I'm excited to be here. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, hi, my name is Heather, and I am very happy. Hi. My name is Heather, and I'm very happy. My name is Ryan, and I am happy to be here with Joe and Heather. My name is Ryan, and I'm happy to be here with Joe and Heather. My name, is Bill and I'm My name is Bill and I'm grateful to be here. My name is Bill and I'm grateful to be here. My name is Tina and this is quite interesting. <laughs> My name is Tina and this is quite interesting. My name is Jenny and this is pretty awesome. My name is Jenny and this is pretty awesome. I'm a baby and I can't help. <laughs> That's really cool. My name is Marty. And I love my family. My name is Lauren. My name is Brittany, and I'm thrilled to be here. My name is Brittany, and I'm thrilled to be here. My name is Nina, and I'm happy to be here with Joe and My name is Lena, and I'm happy to be here with Joe and My name is Chris, and I am also happy to be here. My name is Chris, and I'm also happy to be here. My name, my name is Santa, and I'm happy to be here. My name is Haley, and I'm so good. My name is Haley, and I'm so good. My name is Heather, and I wish you both the best. My name is Heather, and I wish you both the best. My name is Madison, and I'm happy that I get to be here. My name is Madison, and I'm happy that I get to be here. I can't hear anything else. My name is Terry and Avery, and we wish you happiness and love. My name, My name is Terry, and we wish you happiness and love. 
My name is Neil, and I'm happy to share this day with Joe and Heather. My name is Neil, and I'm happy to share this day with Joe and Heather. My name is Sarah, and I feel a part of and alive. My name is Sarah, and I feel a part of and alive. My name is Lou, I'm at peace, and I'm in community with in celebration. My name is Lou, and I'm in community with peace and celebration. My name is Rick, and I'm grateful to be here. My name is Rick, and I'm grateful to be here. My name is Mike, and I'm happy to share this day with you. My name is Mike, and I'm happy to share this day with you. My name is Diane, and I'm also happy to share this day with you. My name is Diane, and I'm also happy to share this day with you. My name is Andy, and this day is unusual and incredible. Thank you. My name is Karen, and I hope your union is very blessed. My name is Karen, and I hope your union is very blessed. My name is Mike, and I love Ritz. My name is Connor, and I'm glad to be here. My name is Diane, and much love and happiness. My name is Diane, and much love and happiness. My name is Cheryl, I'm Heather Barnett's mom. My name is... I'm not done. I just had to throw that in. I just had to throw that in. And I wish all nine of you the best.
has welcomed each other to um, to the circle. Uh, the circle is an important thing for us. Um, it's an important part of our ministry. And uh, our friend Lizard uh, came and was smudging everybody around the outside. If you're not familiar with that, um, the use of sage by uh, Indian cultures goes back forever. It's a cleansing um, and a healing herb. And when it's burned, um, it, it releases all of the negative energies to go and be somewhere else that they are not. Uh, it is also very healthy for you to breathe. Um, Daphne and I both have asthma, 
and uh, we learned a long time ago that burning sage, when when she's having an asthma attack, or when I'm having an asthma attack, whatever it is, the oils in it um, coat your airways and settle your breathing down. And um, if, if Daphne, you know, we uh, years ago we were driving up to the uh, to the peace gathering up in Princeton, and when we walked in, Daphne was having such a bad coughing attack that. We thought we were going to turn around and go home. And when we came up the main aisle of the Princeton Chapel, um, they were smudging everybody kind of aggressively. There was a lot of, of sage smoke, and as she came out the other side, she was she was peaceful. And, her, and it, she had totally stopped coughing, and so, um, so we brought that home with us. A lot like a lot of the practices um, that we've gotten from our, you know, our own personal spiritual journeys. Um, and one of those practices is recognizing the um, directions. Uh, directions being uh, twofold. Directions meaning honest directions, like um, uh, the sun rises in the east, and, and also the, uh, the directions in our lives. And today we're here to celebrate uh, the direction of our um, relationship and the circle of our relationship. And that's why we're in a circle right now. Uh, because each and every one of you has played a part in bringing us here, bringing us together, bringing us the wellness that we bring to each other. And um, that circle is important to us. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, the circle that we do. And um, we call it the circle of plenty. And, and we got that term uh, a bunch of years ago. Uh, because there is plenty of everything in our lives. There's plenty of love. There's plenty of um, arguments. There's plenty of making up. There's plenty of uh, friendship. There's plenty of lack of work. There's plenty of work. Uh, there's plenty of turmoil. There's plenty of downtime. And all of it is welcome. And as, as our family and friends, um, you people have been there to help us feel connected through all of these phases in our life. And so uh, just to, to, to demonstrate, um, we're going to welcome into four directions. And this doesn't mean that they're not here right now. This just means that we are making ourselves aware of, hey, these are the different areas of my life. There are seven directions. OK, there are, there's, um, there's, from, uh, there's from the east, uh, the color red. The color of uh, the color of blood, the color of birth, the color of fire. Um, fire is um, uh, it, it burns up the old and it creates fertile ground for the new. Um, the sun comes up every morning and it brings us uh, the death of the night before and the birth of yet another day, another opportunity for us to get up and walk the face of this earth and be well in our circle. Um, we, we recognize this in our relationship today is kind of a birth for us. Um, although we have been on this journey for a while, it's, it's the, the official birth of our family being one, of our family being a, a complete circle. And um, it's also the death of uh, you know, us being uh, single and us being um, apart from. And so that's that's our birth today. The birth, today is the birth of our togetherness, of our standing and, and looking into each other's eyes and saying our vows and committing to be together. Which means that I am committing to be Heather, and Heather is committing to be me, to being me. You know, they, they say that what we you know what God has joined, let no man and and God is here. And because there's not a pastor here, you need to know that the God is within all of you, and He's with, He's within us. And when God says that we are together, we are together. And what does that mean for your end of it? That means that when Heather calls and maybe she's having a tough day and she's going to start bitching about Joe, <laughs> the obligation of the people in this circle is to remind her of that day <laughs> and to bring her back to that connectedness. And the same thing with me, although it probably would never happen. But, <laughs> on the off chance that I might complain about Heather, 
It is, it is the rest of our family and friends' responsibility to reinforce that togetherness, that connectedness that I took a vow for, and you also were here to take a part of. So we'll welcome in the East. Does somebody have a lighter? Anybody have a lighter? Thanks, Lou. All the smokers are like hiding the lighter in the pocket. No, I don't smoke, I don't smoke. <laughs> I do not get one. But if you have one, um, could you light these candles and we'll put this is the direction of the east if you could put light these and, and place them somewhere here in the And while Mr. Barna is doing that, um, I'm gonna welcome in the men with the uh with this song. Put that down over there somewhere. According to the tradition, I will play a song four times, one for each of the directions. Um, birth is a good part of our life. Um, death of the night is a good part of our life. Um, so with the, with the fire that, just, that destroys and creates, uh, we welcome that into our life. Um, as we turn toward the south, the color is yellow, the color of the sunshine, the color of the daily growth, uh, not quite as... Um, Spectacular as birth, but necessary. Uh, it's the it's the time when you get up and you got to go to work, just like you did the day before, and just like you did the day before that. And um, and it's the showing up. It's the commitment. It's the difference between a man and a, and a boy, and a woman and a, and a and a girl. It is that commitment to slow and steady growth. It is that commitment to walking the walk that God has given us to walk, to walking that journey. And for us, for our relationship, that's about walking our journey together. And, and you know, you people know us. Like, our journey has, it hasn't been happily ever after from the get-go. You know, we paid our dues. And we will continue to pay our dues. And, and we, you know, with this commitment, um, which is just us standing in a circle of friends saying that we are committed to going forward, like, we have made that commitment. We, we've broken up. <laughs> Heather has the exact count. She's in charge of that. But, um, but we always came back together because we were drawn together. Because our souls were meant to be together. And, um, and that's us walking our walk. You know, and, and when, when this happened with us, like everybody was here to listen to us and, and to bring us back together and to remind us of our part. I'm not really fond of that, but like, you know, people here, you know, my friends, they do that. And um, especially Andy, and that annoys the hell out of me. So I usually call him last. Um, because he'll always say, hey, well, you know, maybe she and make excuses for her. And uh, and yeah, I wanna, I wanna talk to him last. But, but that's walking the walk. And, and that happens for us many times in our life. A few years ago, um, not a few years ago, yeah. Uh, when it read that we found out we were having um, a baby, uh, you know, I was tired of doing what I was doing. And so, you know, we went south, we went down to the Keys to go sailing for, uh, for a while. And, and I stood on the shore one day, and I, in my mind, I saw myself taking off my work boots and being like, what now? Like, what do I do now? And in our relationship, you know, we have very, a, a great many uh, good role models of people who, who continue walking the walk and practice acceptance with each other. And, um, you know, it doesn't come natural for me. Uh, but thank God I have good um, people in my life to, to show me what that looks like and how not to live based on feelings. And yet to take my next action based on what is right, what have I vowed to do, you know, what has God given me to, to uh, to do, and our relationship is like that, you know. Um, just speaking for myself, I've been in relationships before, whether they be, uh, you know, a marriage, 
a girl, a, a work relationship, and I was always able to define those relationships going in. I know what this is going to look like because I'm in control, because I'm the boss, and people do what I what I say they do, and and, and I call them whatever I want to call them, but they're hostages, and 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 it was like that for me. Okay, that's not the prettiest thing, but that's my truth. And then I came and I met um, Heather. And uh, and it's different than that. Okay, like uh, all I can say is is that we um, this, for the one of the first times in my life, or definitely the first successful time in my life, I'm a part of a partnership. And that partnership wasn't created today. It's been in an ongoing creation. It's a part of our journey. And today is just a celebration of that. Um, but I get like I came in with not skills. I came in with not knowing how to be a partner. I know how to be a boss. I know how to be in control. Um, and Heather and I have worked very hard over the last four, five years <laughs> educating each other on how to be a partner and how to be accepted and how to keep walking that southern walk. When the sun is beating down and you're hot and sweaty and miserable, to keep walking the walk, to keep saying the I do's that we'll, that we'll say today. So, um, in the south is, is, is Europe. And Heather has brought us with her, uh, these um, moves, crystal quartz, and we're going to use them today to represent the south. So if you can go put them in the south, which will be way about where Lucky is, okay, I'll play them in. Okay, so now we turn toward the west, which is the part where normally you guys hear about. Uh, the west is the color black, and from the west comes all of our weather. We live on the east coast, so all of our weather mostly comes from the west, and it's uh, turmoil, and it's storms, and it's dark, and it's rainy, and, uh, and it's growth. There's growth mixed in there somewhere. Um, but usually, you don't get the growth until like, you get to the Andy call or something like that. But in the, in the middle of that, all the calls up till then, it's all about the house you pissed me off. And what you didn't do right this time. And um, So even though the West sometimes feels hurtful and destructive for us, it's not. It's a welcome part. You know what, we would not be as strong as we are today if we hadn't had the fights that we've had and the disagreements and had to work through it and come to the other side where I respect you and and your opinions and your, your ability and your value to be right. Um, I can say that now because we're not in an argument, but when we're in an argument, it's a little different. Uh, but, that, but that's part of our truth and it's part of our circle of plenty. It's part of the circle of our life is that we do go through those times and we don't pretend like we don't uh, because we have earned the strength that comes from going through those times and out the other side. And today is that celebration of that. Um, so from the west comes the wind, and the wind of turbulence, and the wind of darkness. And somehow I think I'm going to put these here, uh, because it may be true that I sometimes bring it. And we welcome in that circle, that part of our circle for us. part of the circle which is outside of us, uh, which is the north. And the north is the color of white, the color of snow, the color of dormancy, the color of gray hair. 
the color of wisdom. Uh, from the north comes um, peace, like fresh snow in the mountains up where we live. A lot of it last year. Uh, but when you look at it, it's just so peaceful, and there's a hush over everything. And that hush means, like, like just because I can say it and be right, maybe I don't need to say it. And the wisdom of knowing restraint of pen and tongue. And the wisdom of just being and trusting that everything is going to be okay. We're not children anymore. And so we don't need to violently react to everything uh, that comes our way. But we can be peaceful. And we can let it go. Um, the element for, for the north uh, for today is the element of water. And I totally forgot to bring out some water. Uh, so let's just imagine. Um, but there is a bowl of water here. And that's awesome. <laughs> Chris, you, wanna, you know what? Just pour it out on the grass for us if you would. Um, yeah, the north is, is is what happens to us after we after after we go through the west. And you know, we go through each of these directions all the time. We could go through them in a day. We can go through them in five minutes. We can go through them in the, in the season of a lifetime. And I've had people in my life that have shown me that. And uh, we can go through, you know, the ex ecstasy and the, the um, newlywed thing and, um, and then the, the, the almost loss of life and the peace that comes from, uh, from getting a new liver and a new lease on life. Um, like I have, there are people in this circle that have brought that value to me. And, uh, and they continue to show up. And so with respect to them, um, we bring in that part of our circle, which is the moon. plenty that we live in and um, and this is our circle of, of friends so there, are, there are so many circles I told you that there were seven directions there are there, there's those four and um, there's grandmother earth and there's grand uh, mother earth and there's um, the sky uh, which is our dreams and um, in our relationship Heather is the seagull she is she is the bird she is the um, she brings the dream. She brings the imagination. She brought all the decorations. Uh, she brings um, our creativity. Uh, and I'm the pheasant. And I'm the grounding one. I'm the, say, the one who's got to figure out how do we pay for this? How do we organize this? How does this make that happen? And we complete each other like that. You know, my, I, am, I am definitely an earth person. Um, I've always loved, uh, you know, backpacking. And Heather is definitely an air person. There's almost not a single night that doesn't go by that we sit on our back steps and Heather will make some comment about the moon, about the stars, about how it looks different tonight. And it always catches me by surprise. And I love that about her. Um, and she brings it. So, so this is our circle that we are forming our union in today. And, uh, and now we come to the point where we're going to exchange our vows. You ready for that, Mama? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Uh, while, we're, while we're exchanging our vows, I'm going to pass around um, our rings. Uh, this is a tradition that we took from uh, a 12 step fellowship that, that we belong to. And that is, I'm going to pass the rings around. If you would just hold them in your hand. Uh, if you want to close your eyes, just put a prayer in there for us, put a vision in there for us. Maybe imagine us in your mind um, hugging or, 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 uh, or dancing or, or just smiling at each other. like. Put some intention into the rings. It works. Um, it does. I'm sorry, there's four rings. Uh, two of these rings. Um, met a guy when we were down in the Keys who was a silversmith. And so he made these, uh, he made these two rings for us and they have um, seven slashes for directions and seven slashes for kids. And uh, 
that have dragonflies and there's other symbolism that he, he put in there. The other rings are kind of like practical rings. Um, but from this day forward, um, my, my wedding ring will be around my neck. Um, always and not ever not there. And uh, but I guess when we get dressed up, I gotta wear the other one. Thank you. Would like to go first? I would like to go first. Okay. I was standing here. I feel like I'm like. Okay. You want to stand for us? No, right here. I have a grateful heart today, standing with my soulmate, surrounded by our family and friends as they help us celebrate our love and commitment to each other. Our journey together has been winding and we have worked side by side through times when our love was simple and times when our love was an effort. Today I promise to continue to invest in our love and our family unconditionally to cherish and respect you for the beautiful individual and partner you are, to be a smile and joy to your heart and peace to your soul. I promise to be your safe place. The beauty of our love is in our navigating change successfully. I promise to continue to learn and grow with you, encourage and inspire you, laugh, and <laughs> laugh with you and comfort you, to stand by your side and to sleep in your arms. I cherish and hold you in the highest regard today and all our adventures to follow. Thank you. How do they sound? Pretty good? Things you can do them? <laughs> I like them. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so my vows to you are, are this. I, I met you, uh, I met Heather um, about five years ago. Met her in an al meeting. And, and I would talk to her um, after the meeting and uh, text her. And, and Heather was always surprised that I would remember what she was wearing and what she looked like. And, um, and that always struck me because, um, because she was beautiful. And, and like, who wouldn't notice beauty? And, and I think that she knew that. And um, it was usually sometime during the meeting, she would get up and she would walk up the stairs uh, so I could appreciate all the beauty. And uh, I appreciated that. And from there, uh, we got together and, um, and we ran headlong at, at our uh, relationship to each other. And sometimes we ran so hard that we just banged into each other. And we and we and we ricocheted off, and we landed separate. And uh, but always, I would find something that I forgot that was terribly important that was at her house, and I would have to come get. And uh, and then we would come back together. And um, so I guess um, I was thinking about I do's, and what do, what does that mean, and what am I saying I do too? Um, and so I come up with a with a, a little list of that. And uh, my first idea was this, is that when I first met you, I recognized your beauty. And so when the universe asks, who recognizes the beauty in this woman, not just on the outside, but the steadfast, hardworking, creative woman inside, who recognizes that beauty? And my answer is I do. The next question, uh, I think that the universe is asking for an answer today is who admires your values? Who admires that almost every argument we ever have is about our children or about ourselves and how we can be more helpful to them, to each other? Like, yes, they are arguments. Yes, they are in the West. But they tell us, like, what is important to us? What is important to you? I knew those things were important to me. And I know that those things are important to you. And so in answer to the question, who admires the values of Heather, I do. Um, I, I think my next question is, who 
appreciate your passion. It's like our rose quartz uh, stones, like my, my passion. No, they're not. <laughs> That's okay. Um, my friend Chris and I went to, uh, to take native uh, flute lessons one time, and, and we walked into the crystal shop, and, uh, and, he, and he spoke from my heart when he looked around and he said, Yo, what's with all the rocks? <laughs> and and we like that, and that's hilarious, but you know what? They, they are important to you, and and you you imbue them with uh, intentions, and you bring them in our house, and you bring them sometimes into our bed. <laughs> Odd, but I love that. Um, so who admires your passion for that and your creativity? And when people come in and they appreciate our house. They can see the work that I put into it, and they, and they put in, they see the imagination that you have decorated and made our house into a home. So who, who appreciates your passion? <laughs> who walks your walk with you? Who walks through all of the hard times, through all the struggles of, of having children and raising children, and being committed to, to seeing them be successful? Who wakes up with you in the morning and our bed is crowded with the little one and, and, and goes down and, and has coffee for you and like every morning you make me coffee. Like I never make the coffee. And that starts out our day together. And then we go through our day and we take care of business and we take care of the things that we have to do. And at the end of the night, we come back and when our day is done and the kids are asleep, we sit out back and we sit on the steps. And before Bubble Witch and Hill Climb, we used to talk and smoke cigarettes. Now we smoke cigarettes and, and do those things. But occasionally we do still sit and talk about what's important to us. And um, who walks that walk with you? I do. I walk that walk with you every day. And then night. When you hold on to me, um, I remember we were at the summer gathering a few years ago, and somebody came by knocking on our tent before sunrise to wake us up for the lake swim, and and they looked in and they commented later that it looked like one person was sleeping in there, and it looked like that Heather was holding a baby, and that is my point. Is that at the end of the day, when we lay down together and you hold me. Who walks that way? <laughs> who, so that's that's where we are today. Um, who dances with you in the kitchen? I do. Who reads you stories while you're working in the kitchen? Who reads to you from books? I do. Who dreams about a time when our kids are gone and it's just <laughs> us? I do. <laughs> And when all that chaos is gone and the house is quiet and the laundry is clean and the dishes are clean and everything is spotless, like who dreams about that time with you? Like I do. And I show up every day to, to dream our dreams and to flesh out our dreams and live the adventure that is our life. And so just like me all the time, I put a lot of words in. And this is my attempt at vowing to you that I will be with you when the time is quiet. I will be with you in the morning to drink your coffee. I will be with you at nighttime to hold you close. I will be with you when our kids are little and when they're grown and they move to Australia and they only come back for your wedding. <laughs> but I will be with you. And just so you know what you're getting, Here's, my, here's Emily, she's my oldest daughter, and I bring her to this union. I bring all of her beauty and her sense of adventure, and when she tells each and all the rest of the girls to grow up and be a strong, independent woman and do it for yourself, that's my daughter, Emily. And who brings her to you? I do. Joey's not here, he's got a scrimmage. He's, he's chasing his dream yet again tirelessly chasing his dream and, and and we are supportive of him and he's doing well and, we, and, we're, and we're and we're hopeful and Joey is a gentle giant he's six foot five of, of muscle and, he, and he's quiet and he roughs up the girls and he's understanding 
and he's loving. And 20 years ago, I walked down the street and I couldn't find it in myself to be okay. And he was much smaller then, and he looked up at me and he said, Dad, and I looked down and I said, yeah, buddy. He says, I love you. To this day, he says, I love you every time he leaves me. He says, oh, I love you every time he leaves you. Who brings him to this union? I do. As of late, there's a couple new people um, who've been in our house. I don't know, my brother came for one night and he left and he, and he left these people behind and they've been with us for a while. So who brings Matt, who talks incessantly and brings levity and makes sure that there's never a quiet time? I'll take possession of him. I do, I bring him to us. Who brings Brian, the quiet, hard working, came up to our house, got two jobs, sits on the back, out back with you, and is respectful, and, and has an honest conversation with you. Who brings Brian to you? I do. Who brings the 15-year-old who talks to every single person? As we're, we're walking on, on uh, Mike and Trisha's uh, porch across the street, and there's a lot of people that walk by, a lot. And every single one of them there's somebody there to say, hi, how you doing? How's it going for you? Or ask them some question. They got to stop and talk to him so he stops working and can talk to them. So I'm asking you, who brings him to our relationship? I do. Thank you. And there's Veronica, a beautiful young lady in the making, learning how to do laundry. <laughs> Veronica is probably one, in our house, she is the second mother. She takes care of Silas. When, whenever his feet hit the floor, she picks him up and she loves him. And she spins him around and she teaches him how to spin his head and she teaches him how to laugh and giggle and just be crazy. Who brings that to our relationship? I do. And there's Daphne, the quiet one with the wit. <laughs> you gotta pay attention to Daphne because she's quiet but she's got like an 18 year old humor and she throws it out there and it's dry and it's hilarious if you listen to her. And she works hard, very hard. And she's peaceful and she's the middle child. She's the peacemaker. And who brings her to our relationship? And then there's Tabitha. <laughs> Tabitha is hard working. You give her a job, she stays with the job until the job is done. And many times she won't even ask what it is. And this is important to us because we have a lot of people in our house. And there's always counters to be cleaned up and floors to be swept. And she can swift her to floors. And she has a beautiful smile and crazy hair in the morning. <laughs> and who brings her to our relationship? I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful to you. Oh my God! <laughs> and Silas. Where is he? Oh, there he is on the damn dog. My little man. One of the best things about Silas, he's putting his love in our rings, and he's got a lot. Is that when he wakes up, and every time he wakes up, he is so happy, and he smiles, and he crinkles up his eyes, and he smiles as he's sitting on Heather's head. <laughs> and makes me so glad that we're alive in the world. He's awesome. He reminds me of how we all were before the world had its way with us. He's beautiful and he's perfect and he's happy. And who brings him to our relationship? I do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> and so this is the, un the united unity of our family. Um, when the, when the rings get finished, passed around, um, we'll do a little ring ceremony. But uh, um, until then, um, I, I ask you, if you haven't put something into the rings, please do so. It's a very important uh, to us. You know what's important? When times are going good, you don't need stuff like that. But when times are tough and you have that ring around your neck, 
and you're sitting on the back porch and you want to go inside and be right, you can, sometimes you can grab the ring and you can make a decision to go in and be happy. And so there's no mat, there's no, the ring itself has no power, but the intention, the love, the love that God has given, like I prayed for a long time to know what is God's will for me. And I, I'm standing here today because I absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, know that for us to walk our journey together, for us to be as one, is God's will for me. Okay, thank you. Um, can I just logistically rib check? Eight minutes. Eight minutes? Eight All right. minutes. All right. Um, so it's time for us to. Uh, um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank um, you. You're all very important to us, and that's why. Uh, and that's why we asked you to be here. Um, yes, we will be counting on everybody's support going forward. Being in a relationship is challenging, and it's awesome, and it's fulfilling, and it's hard, and I want to share that with it. We want to share that with everybody that's here. And one of the things I love about Heather is that her hair always smells so good. And every night before I go to sleep, I smell her hair. And it helps me to know that I'm home. Um, so thank you for coming to celebrate. Uh, our love for each other, and our commitment to each other, and our battles. I hope. I hope. Okay, and so, uh, thank you for that. Uh, part of the, the Native American tradition is um, to respond with uh, aho, which just means it's kind of like pros it, uh, like you say at Malvern, it's kind of like amen. It just means I, I, I heard what you said and I identify with you. The second half of that is Matakriyasa. Aho Matakriyasa means to all my relations. And everybody in this circle is indeed related to us. They are our relations. You are our, our circle. So um, how about we just break up the circle with one great big Aho Matakriyasa and then we'll break up the circle, okay? Ready? Aho Matakriyasa. <laughs> to go in and we'll start getting our food together and then in eight minutes we'll get rid. Seven minutes now.
Southwest. It's it grows in New Mexico, Arizona, and it's very important in Native American ceremonies. You get, if you, you know, if you buy a new house or a new car, you smudge it because it takes away the negativity and purifies, and it's really good for your breathing and. It's just uh, just great and it smells good too. What's the shell? This is an abalone shell. You can get these out like in Big Sur, California, on the beaches. And a lot of people use them in ceremony. Because they, they, they are great play, you know, it's a great holder for the sage or you, know, you can burn it. Wood? It's a shell. Oh it's, oh, it's a shell shell. It's an actual uh, shell. Oh, shell. Wow. Look at it close, it's an abalone shell. Oh yeah. You can see it's iridescent inside. Yeah. yeah. And it's got like a rainbow color on the inside and they get very, they get hot, so when you burn some sage or in it or something like you're burning this, and unfortunately it's not as bad with just sage, but they put hot coals in here. That's just really giving it the heat. So if it was just sage in there, it would burn out. The sage would just be burning. The sage would burn out, 
and it wouldn't be as hot as it is right now. What's the, just regular old charcoals? Yeah, well, no, usually you just light the sage. This is, a, Joe was burning a lot of sage, so we put the charcoals in there. Yeah. But normally you would just light the sage, put it in the shell, and it burns itself out pretty quickly. Ah, uh, so that's just to get a big guy. Yeah, like Lizard, Lizard, wherever he's at, he brought a big bag of sage, and he'll be burning it throughout the day, but he'll take the charcoal out, and uh, he'll just put the sage, and you'll see how he burns it down. Just like the sage and put it right in there. So we got to find something to do with these coals because right now it's not really serving. Is that really hot to hold? Yeah, well, it's, the edges? it's hot. Not the edges isn't too bad, but if you put your hand Holy on the bottom. Holy damn, dude. Yeah, that's yeah. hot. Yeah. As you can see, we had it sitting right here. It was actually catching, burning the tablecloth. But you would just take like a piece of sage like this. This is what you normally do. You take a piece of sage like this. You light it. Because I was scared. This is like this is this is from a smudge stick. They call this a smudge stick. But lizard has like the loose sage. Like this is a stick, so it's not burning. It's not burning like you can see how that's burning. But yeah. the sage he has would burn a lot quicker. Like if you would take like a piece of. Uh, so this is all like woven tightly together. Yeah. You can just throw that on there like this. They got the coals here, so you want to put it right on top of the coals. And you just give it like, like I have at home for my, I have like a, a hawk wing, and that's a smudge fan. You can use turkey uh, yeah. wings, so you just, you know, you fan it to. Like, see, see how that's working now? Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, a couple of hours ago. You'd want to come over here, and it's like, like you can bathe yourself in the stage and wipe away all the negativity. And you want to jump in there, you can. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you want it. Did he start to wing out? Not fast enough. Yeah. Just the air blowing it right across you. Yeah. In this situation, you probably want to put this. Is that glass? Oh, the candle. Big glass or plastic? I don't know. Yeah, plastic. Yeah. plastic. Yeah. That's very, very. If it's plastic, it'll just uh, melt right onto it. We yeah. should put it. <gasps> You grab their one. It's their man. Yo, 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 we went to a drum making workshop. We actually made these frame drums ourselves. Oh, you did that? Yeah, you take, you take, uh, this is, you get the frame. This is an elk hide. This is the leather he put in there. And you soak the, you soak the elk hide overnight. Then you punch the holes in here and it's lot, it's not a, it, You can oh, see, awesome. and it's not really as hard to make as you would think. And you know, if you're going to be doing drumming ceremonies and stuff, you will certainly want your own drum that you personally made with your heart and soul. And you could wood burn on the inside of it. As you can see, Joe wood burned a bird, a kicker paley. Yeah. Got his name in the drum. Yeah. The 12, oh. 12 steps. Uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, Dragonfly. Dragonfly. You know, this is all stuff that means something to Joe. You could probably ask Joe what it means. But, uh, huh, that's awesome. Yeah, you can. The Rainbows of Healing will offer a workshop where you can make that, where you can make them yourself. Elk hide. Yeah, it's elk hide. That's his flute. Is, yeah, that's another one. Right, right. Yeah, this is, uh, Native Americans are really big on all sentient beings, like in Buddhism, all sentient beings. If you, there's no really no God in Native Luton. It's all, it's all nature. So this would represent the, 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 the you know, the winged ones. Then you have the uh, creepy callers. Is it turquoise and uh, arrowhead. Is that turquoise and arrowhead? Um, yeah, I think it is. 
and uh, you know, and you got the winged ones, the four-legged ones, like, like in, uh, when you smoke the peace pipe after lodge. Yeah. The stone represents, you know, grandfathers, earth, you know, and then you got the the winged ones, the four-legged ones. The beads represent the four-legged ones, and you got the creeping okay. ballers. It's all, it's all one. What's this? That's a double flute. That's a double flute. Joe can probably play it better than me. But I don't want to play it because it's his flute. No. <laughs> but these are high spirits. The high spirit flutes. Rainbows are healing. Ian offers flute, le flute, Native American flute lessons too. And you can see it's a nice piece. Of really nice. That's, oh, check that out. Yeah. Oh, wow. If you flip it over. It's tur That's turquoise, right? Yep. You got these little flutes here. Holy meat, chef. <laughs> A lot in there. How many racks or ribs are in this thing? 25. Wow. Yes, I, I cooked a lot of them. I still have a lot of them left that wouldn't fish here. Okay. Were all of them wrapped up? Yeah. Yep. Pardon. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that's how you do it. Getting B roll. This was an obvious turn around, by the way. I bet you, you could at least have one more. Oh, he's got room. Why don't you just people from coming to you? Oh, okay. Not really, it's two things. I know. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, well, the work was almost done. Yeah, yeah now right. I know. She talked to Becky. Yes, yes I did. Yes, she did. She did a lot of it. I stood here and watched. Good job, Chris. Let me teach you. Let me teach you kids how to rap. Hey, everybody, pick this in. Here you go. I don't know. I'm watching a movie for your nap. I don't want to go to sleep.
This was the oil tank downstairs, where the down through the basement bathroom is now. That's where this used to be. You might need one for you and for. Is it Joe? Joe, you might do that too. Yes. Yeah. Chris and Joe build it, and uh, they brought it up last night. I just came up early this morning. Joe or Heather? Okay, go. Okay, so. Uh, this is a labyrinth, and it's on the International Registry of Labyrinths. There are not a whole lot of them in the world. And apparently people come from all over the world to do this one. And it's a meditation, typically they are found in Tibetan or Buddhist temples, um, or right outside of there, or in uh, gardens of the such. But typically it's, it's not a maze. It's a pit. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And if you just follow, you cannot get lost. The idea of it is, it is a meditation of intention. Um, in other words, you come to the labyrinth, this one, you begin from the east, which is this uh, right here, and you have in your mind an intention, or something that you're going to think about, or an issue, or something like that, and you walk it, and you, just reflect about it. It is that simple. Um, and it is also that uh, profound, uh, like meditation and breathing. Um, the pace for it is whatever your pace is. Uh, I've done it before. The first time I've ever done it, uh, somebody else jumped up and they started like going pretty quick right through. And uh, But usually people walk it at, at like a pensive, kind of face. So, if you haven't done enough weird things today, uh, you can at least say you've done a lot of it. And um, so if you would like to do it, we do generally just respect like a little distance between people. We just come to the, to the entrance and when you get here, you think about what your intention is, what you're, what you're throwing at them. We'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Words. Oh, we also walk inside. We spend a lot of time. Okay. Okay. So, if anybody else would like to do it, just when people are doing it, try to be quiet. Just come here and then stand, and then when you're ready, you can just take off.
I wanted a rematch forever. I tried to get that in all of you. This rematch for my they look, they look more of the variety that I would like. More of a set up. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about the rematch is um, the rider style. So what's our backdrop here? Okay, uh, one of you is this. Why? 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 But the lady across the street cheated twice. <laughs> I see where you got messed up, right here, with the line fade. Yeah. I was over there. Exactly. You can't tell whether it turned she came up here and turned around. You can't tell back here back either. Around around. She turned around right yeah. here. Yeah. Well, it kind of does kind of look like it. That's what I mean, it fades. See, so it wasn't like that. The second time I was following you. You're all there. We know what And you want me to get a picture of the family? So we need everything? I did. Back a bit. Chris in the background. Are you on it? Yeah. All right, hold. All right. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So today uh, we're gonna have to marry ourselves. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Not too late for a mood modification. <laughs> okay. So we are married today. Uh, we're wait, wait, wait. Start over. <laughs> I was turning it on when you said, "Okay, so today." Come on, I got to. No, you got to give me the. All right. Hold on a minute. Okay. Thank you everybody for coming today. And mom and dad, we wish that you could have been here and we are um, super glad you had the idea of getting the video so you could be a part of it. Um, you guys are very important in our lives. And uh, we love how you've been showing up and coming up to be with us and welcoming Heather and everybody into our family. And um, we're excited about it. This is a great part of our journey and we're glad that everyone was here. And what do I remember about today? I probably was nervous about the ceremony, and, uh, and I'm glad that it came off really well, and I'm super glad that there was a ton of ribs, um, and it was all really good. And that we're married. And uh, what I remember about today is the weather, got absolutely beautiful, so we were able to do the ceremony outside like we really wanted to, and it just felt perfect. And we're back. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Alright. Cut. That's a cut. That's a wrap. Grab it. That's a wrap. Alright, get the heck out of my way.